Today, we're going to look at building a quick and easy Google Form. Google Forms are like a web page where someone can enter answers and they all get compiled into a spreadsheet. Currently, we have an example of a sort of a sign-up form that we're putting online. And we've created this in a Google Doc so people can just add another line uh, to fill out the form, in essence, or to add data to this table. The problem is everyone can see everyone else's responses, which actually isn't ideal and isn't exactly what we want to do. So although this was a quick and easy solution, we're going to look at uh, a solution that's just as quick and just as easy by creating a Google form. So we're going to do that with exactly the same information. We're going to ask students for their name, email, department, status, and available times and days that they would like to uh, take a test. Now I've sort of anonymized it and I've called it the TEST test, but that's not important. The important thing is let's make a form. So we're going to go up to File, File, New, and we're going to choose Form. So the first thing we get to do is name our form. Let's call this the TEST uh, Sign Up Form. Call it whatever you like. You can choose any theme that you want. I find the default is just fine, so I'm going to keep that. Uh, now, some options. Show progress bar at the bottom of form pages. We only have five questions. Not really important. On longer forms, this might be more critical. Here is our title. Here's where the description goes. We are going to go back to our previous form and just copy and paste this information into that area. So this is sort of the preamble, the details, the information uh, that would have been at the top of that page before. And now we're going to start putting in our questions. So our first question on the forum is name. So we're going to put in name. Uh, help text is possible if you need to explain your question or if you need the longer question with a shorter title. Name, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're going to make this a text question, not a multiple choice, obviously, and we're going to make this a required question. Done. There's our first question. If we want to add more items, which we do, we click here. Let's add another text item because the next one we want is email. So again, our title is email. Help text not required. Uh, here's where they put their answer. And under advanced settings, we're going to use data validation. So we're going to validate the text and make sure it contains an email address. You'll see this on websites sometimes. You'll, you'll mistype your email address and it says, uh-oh, that's not an email address. That's what this question is going to do for us. Uh, let's make that a required question. What we have next is department. So we're going to add another text question. Academic department. Uh, it's a text and it's a required question. Done. And our next one is status, so whether a student is PhD student, master student, and so on. We're going to make this a multiple choice question. So we're going to call it status. Well, let's call it academic status. That might be a little more clear. We can always change it. So multiple choice, and you can see we can go to a page based on the answer. Again, this is a really short form. We don't need that. So master's, PhD, and just in case there is another option, let's choose other, and that'll go ahead and fill in as needed. It's a required question, we're done. And the last thing, available day or time. So this is where a student can enter some of the times they might uh, like to meet for a test. So we'll make this a text, and we'll call it available day time. I'm gonna call it available days slash Times. And for the help text, I'm going to just copy this text here and paste it here and just sort of say, for example, uh, Monday and Tuesday 12 to 3, Wednesday 11 to 1, Thursday 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, let's just reduce this to two options. Uh, two examples, and I think that clarifies it because we're only allowed to use one line here. Uh, we can't have it on different lines, which would make it clearer. So, uh, there we go. Done. And that's all we need. So, uh, the confirmation page. The generic is your response to be recorded. I think that's fine. Show link to submit another response. I don't think we'll need to do that in this case. 
uh, publish and show public links. No, allow responder set or response after submitting. No, we don't want any of that. So our form is ready. To view the live form, we click the view live form button. And here it is just as so we created it. You can see all the questions are recorded. So I'm going to put in my name, my email, not my real email, but you get the idea, academic department, uh, education and human ecology. And let's say I'm working on my PhD and my test times, Wednesdays uh, from 12 to 2 p.m. Submit, and the form has been submitted for me. So when we're back on this page, we can see there's now one response, and anytime I want to view the responses, I click here and I see a real simple spreadsheet with all my answers, including a timestamp when I took the test or when I entered the information, name, email, academic department, academic status, and available days. All the information I added is right there, and as students or people complete the form, it'll just get added to the spreadsheet. So how long was that? Six minutes total? Not too bad. So next time you need information to to solicit information you can set up a google form in under five minutes and get everything clean clear quick and a real nice simple web form that anyone can use uh, then how do we share this you copy the url and paste it in an email or uh, stick it on a website there are lots of different ways but it's really easy to do